Hi, this is Bill Knauer for Author Magazine, and this month I spoke with Cami Garcia about why books are like ice cream, why she loves to outline and edit but hates to draft, and why no matter how successful and experienced we are, we still deal every day with some level of self-doubt. Enjoy. Well, Cami, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I, I think I mentioned to you on Twitter that um, I was thinking of you because you you and Margaret are make a brief appearance in my book coming out in June about creativity and and the nature of writing and self-doubt. And, and I found you guys interesting because you tell a great story um, about... <laughs> but one thinking the other had written a sentence that they were going to, and you didn't know in the end who had written what, right? Yeah. And, you know, you're like Lennon McCartney, I guess, in certain ways. And there's a, a sense of like, I think there's a great egolessness that is very helpful in that process. Most writers don't have that experience. Of course, they just, you know, they write everything. But did that help you in some way kind of get over yourself a little bit? Sure. I mean, I think the fact that we didn't write Beautiful Creatures to be published, we wrote it on a dare. As a dare. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. We wrote it for seven teens, like, to win a bet and to, like, blow their minds. So <laughs> we, and I always feel like if you, you know, even when I write other novels, like, I don't write novels thinking everyone in the universe is going to like them and I'm going to be a phenomenon. You know, I write right. them thinking... There's a certain type of person who, are gonna, who is going to like these books, and I'm going to write books that will blow that type of person's mind. Are you that type of person? Um, I try to be. You, but are you the, I mean, in somewhere in you, because you write for younger, you write for yeah, younger I mean, YA I author, write, right? General? I try to write things I would have loved, and I try right. to write things that either the teens or the adults that read YA that I know would love, yeah. you know, with twists and and really, you know, very authentic voices. And sometimes people will say like, well, I just really don't like beautiful creatures or I don't like your your um, contemporary standalone romances because they're not, rom you know, there's too too many bad things happen. They're just not perfect and romantic enough. And I always say that's totally cool because they're not for you. Like that's right. Like books are like ice cream. There are people who don't like chocolate as inconceivable to me as <laughs> that is. I like it. Ooh, that you're the first one who's used that metaphor. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I totally like ice cream. It's subjective. It is. And so I say it's okay if you don't like mine because like I'm writing for the people who like chocolate. If you, if people who like, like hate chocolate are not going to like my books, but if, if anything, I always am happier to have people talking about them and debating them than not talking about them because that means they're so boring. No one remembers them. All right. So you and Margaret work together uh, for four books um, and and, but at some point, and you were not, your goal in life was not to be a writer. You were a teacher and you were happily so. And so when you went off on your own, um, I, I don't mean, I, I, it's a strange comparison, you and John Lennon and McCartney, but I remember them talking, because I was a big Beatles fan and hearing them talk about that decision because they, you know, they wrote into each other's noses was their description. Yeah, that's how we were, yeah. Right, so, because you, you were like trading back and forth and all this, and I would suspect it, maybe when you first broke off on your own, it was maybe a little challenging or was it like- Oh yeah, it was final? terrible. Terrible, it was. It was. Terrible. Like yeah. Margie was like, Why? this is not at all as fun as when we write together. <laughs> because like there's two things. Number one, there's a lot more doubt because when you write with someone whose work you respect or who, you know, whose storytelling abilities you respect. Yep. Even if I'm not sure if I'm on the right track, if Margie likes my idea, then I feel like, well, she is an amazing fantasy reader and so and writer. So if she likes it, it's fine. When you're on your own, you don't have that fail save. Um, you also, the cool thing about writing with a partner the way we write is um, you also get to kind of be a reader. Because every time I get something back, I'm even though I might know a kind of the outline, there's going to be lines and like moments and things that I don't anticipate that are so fun and surprising. And when you're yeah. writing your own stuff, you do not have that. It all seems super boring for me when I'm writing. Yeah. Well, the goal, and I'll bet you've learned this now that you've done some on your own, is you start getting surprised, right? Eventually, something starts surprising you a little well, bit. 
I will say I don't like to draft novels at all. It's like right. it is very painful and miserable for you me. You mean outline? Yeah. No, I love outlining. I love. I oh, love but books. you find the first draft to be painful. First draft, I hate. Why? I don't mind revising. Why? Because to me, it's really, really difficult because it's almost like I'm listening for the voice. I'm watching the story in my head and I need to like keep it running to, you know, record it. Okay. And there's a lot of doubt. Like once that I have it on the page, I know I can fix it if there's something wrong. But when I, you know, it's almost like I'm worried if I'm going to, you know, forget parts or I'm not going to record the right parts or. Right. You're just going, you know, viewers, listen, Cammy here, she's a successful very successful writer. She's been at this while. You see, this is why my next book is about self doubt and the writers battle with it. It's a, it plagues us all. Yeah. It and it just, doesn't go, mine doesn't no, go away. Like it's no. not better now because I've done a whole lot of books. Not even a little bit. A little bit. The one thing I will say that was really interesting about gra doing graphic novels was like, I am an outliner and I love plot and I love what I call character moments, like moments that really reveal char the character, you know, who right. the character is, what their yeah. pain is, what their flaw is. And I love dialogue. So I had no idea how much I would love writing graphic novels because that's all it is. There's no filler. All right. So what for Cammy is the best part of writing and what's the worst part of writing? Um, I love coming up. I love brainstorming, coming up with the ideas. I love outlining. Um, my outlines are more like a beat sheet, but I mean, I also do, um, I use Pinterest and I also use, I create like boards in oh. there, a, a bunch on like my Instagram, people can see the boards for some of my series. Right. So they have photos and quotes. So like the, the building of the thing and the characters and everything for me is the most fun. Okay. Um, I also love, I also love um, once it's written and I, it, I'm really getting to revise it, like getting to clean right. up and add all the Making like- it make sense. Yeah. And okay. also add, I mean, I'm a pretty clean writer. I write very lean. So almost nothing I write is ever cut. I always have to add. My editor is like, it's like, um, it's kind of like the way I say it is it's very skeletal. And then like in the revision process is where I put the fat, oh. you know, I add the fat. It's usually the other way around for most writers. Yeah, but I'm not, I need, because I've learned about myself that I just need to finish. Yeah. So the best thing for me is like, save all the like, you know, the hair and the like, you know, the description of the flower gardens I'll Come and back stuff, to that. Like, or after. Right. And just get down the main story and the main dialogue. And then I can go back and I don't mind. I like tinkering. So then I can go back and add as much as I want. All right. Well, what's the worst part? What's the uh, part you don't like about it? I don't like the drafting. Um, I mean, like I love drafting. I love the days that go well, like when you're and I sure. love having finished yeah. and being like, oh, I wrote so much today. But I hate those days where like it just seems like it's not the words are not coming, and it's like because then I also that's where the self doubt kicks, and I'm like, this is a terrible idea. Right. That's why I can't write today. Right. Because this idea is so bad. Yeah. Sometimes I also just need to not write for a day or two. Like sometimes I'll just, you know, I'll watch a movie or something like something that I consider inspirational. Yeah. Well, also, I do think there's a thing that happens where the idea wants to come, the solution, the, the, the vision for it wants to come through, but we're blocking it. I think we are always blocking it. Yeah. And sometimes you have to stop thinking stop blocking it by getting distracted and then oh there suddenly there it was i do think that's the way we all work on some level so i i definitely way. feel like whether driving is a big thing for me yep. if i'm driving around and when i take and if i take a shower that's right that's right i'm the same way because those are places or doing the dishes sometimes because then your mind isn't and yep. you're just drifting easy and that's you know, I always say with writing, because I, I really write about creativity a lot. That's sort yeah. of my thing. And I've, I've come to understand it's really a frame of mind that allows creativity. It's not, I mean, there is a skill to it, but I think the biggest skill is getting into the frame of mind that allows creativity. And then it can And knowing out. how to get into it. And that's correct. And like I have it certain, accidentally. Like I have certain things. I mean, I have my chair. I, like I wear big noise canceling headphones when I write. Oh. And like. Yeah. Yeah. And like, if I am having trouble writing and I don't have them on, like immediately I go find them. Cause that's like, it signals to my brain. Like now I'm working. That's right. Block out the world. Well, it's true. When, yeah. And I don't block out the world. Like, 
tweet and stuff. I don't do other nonsense in them. I only write in them. Yeah. All right. Cammy, you're so interesting. I'm so glad I got you on this. Hey, we did it through Twitter, people. It happens sometimes. That's how I reconnect you with Cammy. I can't wait to read your book on creativity. I am a huge writing craft. Like, Oh, good. I will send, if you email me, your, I will send you a copy. When it, I will, and I'll put a picture of me reading. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, I just they just put up the uh, pre-order thing on Penguin, so I'm excited. Oh, can't wait awesome. So, um, all right. I got one more question for you, though. Cammy, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to finish this sentence. If writing, all the different kinds of writing you've done has taught you anything, it's taught you what? Um, if writing has taught me anything, it's that you have to be true to yourself. Yeah. You have to be, you know, like you have to write, you have to write your story, what you're passionate about. It's a great lesson for a writer of YA because if this young people, that's a big lesson for, well, for all of us, but certainly it's a thing young people have to get. It's tough. I, for me, it was, you know, yeah. try to please yeah. this one, try to please that. Who am I supposed to be? So for you to understand it experientially and to see the power of it, you can speak with more authority when you write characters, discover it. Yeah. But I think I understand it because of, I like, I went through it. So on such a, like such a deep level at, you know, when I was younger, if I hadn't struggled with it, I don't think I would understand it. Right. I think it's the struggle. And I think that when I'm writing, I'm always trying to understand it. People used to ask me why they thought beautiful creatures was so popular with a lot of adults, even though it was a YA book. And right. aside from the fact that it has lots of adult characters, right. I said, like, what Beautiful Creatures is essentially about is, like, you know, find, figuring out who you are and having the strength to be the person, brave enough to be the person that you want to be. And I said, that's not something we, like, stop having to do as adults. No, no. Oh, my God, no. Spend yeah. my life doing that. Yeah, I've like my you life trying your to life, figure out what I really spend your life figuring out how to fit in with the parents at school, your kids' yeah. friends' parents, or how yeah. to fit in at your new job, or what you know, whatever. It, how to fit in on Twitter, whatever it is, yeah. you're always yeah. trying to figure out how to navigate and you know have the confidence to do you know this or that. And you know, like I said, I understand self doubt very deeply because I remember vividly feeling that way. And then I also remember how it doesn't really feel that different now. 